sweetheart. I got here as fast as I could. Speedy, aren't you? No, they don't call me Flash for nothing. Lightning would be more appropriate. Well, what are we waiting for? It's a whole town to be seen. I've seen the town. Not the way I'll show you. You sharpened your fangs around here long enough. Go howl up another alley. Oh, come on, boy. Congratulations. That's one of the neatest tricks I've ever seen. Thank you. The wolves are thick in New York. Remind me not to flirt with you. That shouldn't be necessary. Mr. Wolf, less than two minutes ago, you asked me to remind you not to flirt. That was two minutes ago. I just wanted to say Explanations that... Explanations have an odious quality. I just wanted to tell you that I have an appointment with Montclair. So have I, but... Oh, I thought that perhaps you would... No explanation, please. They do have an odious quality. Hello, Montclair. Hello, Mr. Wolf. Mr. Wolf? My name, not my character. I expected you earlier. Unavoidably detained. You see, the young lady thought I was following her. <laughs> then you're not together. Through no fault of mine. I'm Joan Summers. Jewelers Indemnity sent me over. Oh, you're the one who lost the emerald. I hope you'll be able to match it for me. We have quite a selection for you to choose from. Won't you see it? Thank you. You've been quite a stranger lately, Wolf. Yes, I've been on the West Coast. San Francisco? Yeah, Los Angeles. Gone back to the pre-war days of chasing after customers. I've a buyer interested in that stone from the Corinth collection. Well, here it is, if you care to examine it. Oh, thanks. Sorry my assistance at lunch. How many? Nineteen? You know your emeralds. Eighteen point nine. Isn't it a shame emeralds are size are never perfect? If they were as hard as diamonds, we might expect perfection. As it is, a law or two must be taken for granted. Oh, Mr. Wolf, about the Corinth diamond. Well, I... May I see it? Oh, yes. This isn't one of the Corinth diamonds. What? It's an imitation. Impossible. In here. Is there anyone from theft to tail in the building? Sergeant Sharp? Yes, send him up here at once, please. Montclair. One of the Corinth diamonds. No wonder it fooled you, Wolf. This was cut by a master. How can you remain so calm in the face of a $30,000 loss? Insurance is a good protection against stomach ulcers, isn't it, Montclair? If that reminds me. I'd better call Jewelers Indemnity. How did you know the value of this? I saw the whole collection in Paris, and they brought it back from Herr Gehring's castle. Hello, Sergeant. Hello, Mr. Montclair. I like starting a case behind bars for a change. A Corinth diamond missing, eh? Yes. Hello, oh, Mr. Wolf. Hiya, Sharp. When did you discover the loss? Just now. Hello, Kirby. Sharp. I'm up at Montclair's office, 25th floor, Jewelers Tray Building. Diamond robbery. Yep. Is Cashman on duty? Good. Send her up. Yeah. Uh huh. Goodbye. I'll see you later, Mr. Montclair. And don't sell the emerald until you hear from me. Just a moment. Sit down, please. How did you discover the loss? You see, well, you Sergeant... see, I can't... One at a time, Mr. Montclair. Miss Summers asked to see the diamond. Mr. Wolfe was looking at it, and he gave it to her. It was she who discovered the imitation. Miss Summers discovered it. And you had been examining it? That's right. Thought you were an expert on diamonds. You know diamonds. Why don't you take a look at it? 
I see what you mean. Almost like the real thing. Has anyone else looked at the stone the last few days? Of course. I want a list of their names. Now, Miss Summers. I'll vouch for Miss Summers. She was sent here by the jeweler's indemnity to replace an emerald which she lost. Your address, Miss Summers. The Vonda, Park Square. Why did you ask to see the stone? Curiosity. I'm really more interested in emeralds. How long have you known Miss Summers? To coin a phrase, I... I never saw her before in my life. Sergeant, I'll bet you're just itching to search me. Well, why don't you do it and get it over with? One thing I rarely get, cooperation. It's just routine, you know. Let her in. Miss Cashman, I want you to search Miss Summers. Suppose I object. Then we take you down to headquarters and book you on suspicion. Must you go through with it? Yeah. Then use my office. The handbag, Evie. All right, Mr. Wolf. Let's have the coat. Tell me, Sergeant. Are you a betting man? Only on sure things. Want to bet you don't find the rock? And you? On me. No, but I'll bet I find it. I wouldn't mind winning $10. Neither would I. It's a bet. You better take your clothes off, dearie. Well, you can go. I'd like to see how you make out with Miss Summers. You can read it in the papers. Well, I was interested in watching a professional at work. I don't like an audience. Thanks. Any luck? No. That's a point of view. Now may I go? A few more questions. Well? Mr. Wolf didn't seem anxious to leave. I took it as a compliment. I was too busy with motives to notice how attractive you are. Sergeant, if you don't mind, I ought to be reporting this loss to the insurance company. I was about to pick up the phone when you were... Uh, Go ahead. Which company? The Jewelers Indemnity. They've been taking an awful beating lately. I like the details on that stone. Mr. Coleman, please. Mr. Montclair. What's that? A Corinth diamond. Well, I'll have someone on it right away. Oh, no, no, please. Don't send Sharp down here. I'll take care of this myself. Now, I assure you, there is nothing to worry about. If it is covered in due time, you will be paid in full. Yes, sir. In response to your letter, oh, I'll... Please, not... please, I can't dictate now. I've got to think. Must be serious. It's one of the Corinth diamonds. Those crooks seem to think I'm in business for my health. Hi, Carwin. Just heard about the Montclair heist. Hello, baby. Uh, Bad news travels fast. $30,000 rock, I hear. Want it back? No, no, I just delight in paying claims. That's what you'll do if you let the cops in on the case. Hang it, man, what do you think? Let my secretary alone. What do you think the police are for? Oh, they're very good at clearing the streets for a nice parade. But when it comes to jewels, look at the record. Four thefts in one month, no arrests. I know, I know, you don't have to remind me. If you want that Corinth diamond in one piece, you better put me on the job. How much? 10 G's. 10,000? Would you rather pay the full 30? No, all right, you win. Say, how do you know so much about all of this? I just heard about it myself. Like you said, bad news travels fast. Sergeant Sharp to see you. Tell him to wait. Too late, sweetheart. See you tomorrow, boss. Delivery guaranteed in 24 hours. Hi, copper. You putting this character on the current case? Well, I can't afford $30,000. That means one more crook goes free, pockets bulging with your cash. Listen, I'm going to get that stone back before they cut it up. You're the angel for the neatest little racket this side of Sing Sing. All they have to do is steal a diamond, sell it back to you, and no questions asked. Look, if you give us a little time, we'll end up with a lot of them behind bars. 
But no, you hire Barker, and our chances get that much slimmer. Oh, I know it's wrong, but 30,000. What's the freight with Barker? 10,000. Two more robberies like that, and you're right where you started. Think it over, Mr. Corwin. Give the law a chance. as you are at Diamonds. Yes, I find it pays to know all the angles of one's profession. Yeah, I see. You worked your way up. Clear to the top. Dig deeper than that. Oh. Bright girl. You know, Miss Summers, I could teach you a few things about judo. Does that constitute a threat, Mr. Wolf? Well, it isn't a challenge to a rug match. You, you said something about a wrestling match. I have no defense against perfume. How does one get rid of a stolen diamond, Mr. Wolf? One gets rid of it by giving it to me. One is about to add an emerald to one's collection. She resents competition in diamonds. Oh, so that's what you were up to. And now you don't know how to dispose of the Corinth stone. Well, I know my way around London and Paris, but in America you I... You need an outlet. which calls for a uh, merger of our interests. For the time being, at least. Columbus 81849. Hello, Nick. Kendall. Yes, of course, in the bag. Strictly a slang expression. What's the offer? Five thousand? It's a deal. What time and where? Three o'clock? Room 312 Ashton Hotel? We'll be there. Yeah, we. I, uh, I picked up a temporary partner. We'll meet you out front. There you are, Miss Summers. Now, let's dispense with formalities. Joan, isn't it? Joan, it is. At 3 p.m., you'll be $2,500 richer than you are right now. 5000 isn't much pay for our efforts. The insurance company is only giving 10000 to get the diamond back. And who's going to get the other five? Nick and the go-between from the insurance company. You see, that way I stay out of the picture. And pictures have frames around them. Make yourself comfortable. I'm going to fix my face. I like it the way it is. After all the damage you've done to it? People who live by the clock travel through life in a rut. Please, no philosophies. I still say the time to do something is when you want to do it. Oh. <clears throat> I'll bet you have a lot of fun with your boyfriends. I still prefer 
her to live in a rut? Do we keep her date with Nick? A good general knows when to retreat. That was only the first round. Kendall. Hey, Nick. My new partner. Mm-hmm. Who's upstairs? Barker. You got the stone? Give it to him, Joan. I'd rather stay with it till we get the money. Gagey, isn't she? Nick's all right. Time, Nick. I like things neat and prompt. Oh, what have you been doing? Oh, looking at pictures. What pictures? Lincoln, Jackson, Harrison, Hamilton. Valuable engravings. Worth about seventy-five hundred to the right man. Wow. I guess I'm your man. That's it. Tell Wolf he has a nice taste for knickknacks. Who said Wolf made the heist? Didn't he? Seventy-five hundred dollars will pay off that jackpot question. Oh. You're a smart man, Nick. It's a pleasure to do business with you. You don't have to check that dough. Did I say anything when you checked the diamond? Who's there? The law. Well, look who's here. You know Nick, don't you? Didn't I send him up the river? Hiya, Nick. What is this, a business or a social call? Business. The Corinth Diamond? You ought to know. Well, now, you don't have to knock yourself out on that case any longer. I know it. You see, when I moved in here, I walked right over to this dresser to put away a couple of shirts. Looked in. And what do you know? There it was. I'll turn it in. All right, Nick. Say, did you know that your old cell is still vacant? Now, look. I haven't seen Barker since you sent me up. What's wrong with a couple of pals getting together for a drink? How much? Seventy-five hundred? How'd you guess? It wasn't a guess. Well, then you heard about my good luck. Look, I've had my quota of fairy tales. That's it. The seventy-five to one shot at Pimlico yesterday. I had my last hundred bucks on it. If you don't believe me, you can check the results. I had two dollars on it myself. You're not taking me down on a bad beef, are you? This money's going down to headquarters and you're going with it. Stick around, Barker. I'll pay you a social call some other time. Kendall, I'm the one who intends to drive back alone. 
There's no place in my date book for double crossers. No, wait a minute. Let's get this straight. You were alone in my sitting room long enough to telephone the police. You sacrificed Nick and Barker and $2,500 to scare me off because you don't like competition. I don't play that way. I had it figured you tipped off the police. You can trust Nick? Sure. And Barker? It's his bread and butter. Anyone else know about this? Not a soul. Well, I guess that's the end of our merger. Why? The city's full of diamonds. Well, we can get into plenty of trouble playing around with men like Barker. I like this hat. Where'd you get it? Claxton's, hmm? You know, someone tipped me off that you and Barker be up in room 312 with a diamond. Hat like that must cost around 10 bucks. I think I'll buy me one when I get my dough back. I wasn't just talking when I cracked about your old cell being vacant. A tie come from Claxton's, too? Maybe you're getting tired of tramping up to the parole office every week. Maybe it's easier just sitting in a cell. Well, they set you back for the tie. About 250? I've been thinking about this fellow, Kendall Wolf. You want to know something? You've talked me into taking my trade over to Claxton's. About that telephone tip-off I got. It's good goods. Claxton's, too? I could have sworn it was Wolf's voice that tipped me off. You know, if they had a blue one just like that for around 85 bucks, I might get me one. This morning I had Wolf paid for a legitimate broker. Now I'm not sure. I'd give a lot of immunity for the lowdown on him. Mm, it's getting past my dinner time. Sit down. You're not going anywhere. Is Wolf on the level or is he a crook? I like to eat at 6.30. If he's a crook, he double-crossed you. Neat and prompt. That's me. What about the girl, Joan Summers? I swear she's got a record. So, if it's all the same to you, I'd like to go back to my room. The next stretch will be ten years, Nick. I hate to see you take the rap. When the tip-off that sent you up the last time was the same voice that sent me to the Ashton today. Tip. On Claxton's. Yes, come in. What's the idea of working Nick over without me? No offense, Emery. It's all fixed, Nick. I got a writ. The judge. Too bad you went to all that trouble. I was just letting Nick go. Oh, and uh, what about the money? The money, too. Oh, uh, just a minute. Uh, might as well collect this later. Uh, there we are. <laughs> Hi, Nick. My daughter's been pining away for you. And so has Irma. 
<laughs> Are you alone? Well, no, I... Uh... Oh, Miss Summers, I want you to know Mr. and Mrs. Davenport. Oh, How do you do? How do you do? Tell me, have you seen the diamond? No. Do so immediately. They're perfectly exquisite. We'll, uh, we'll see you inside. Yes, of course. He's the biggest diamond broker in town. Do you know everyone? Everyone worth knowing. Good evening, Colonel. Oh, it's not. He's the man to see for pearls. <laughs> Aren't they magnificent? I'd give anything to wear them. Two million dollars? You hit it right on the nose. Oh, hello, Sergeant. Slumming? Oh, I get around. So do you. Uh, this morning was the start of a beautiful friendship. Cupid's little helper, that's me. You'd look too cute with wings. But I detect an insinuation. You're a detective. <coughs> Your table's ready, Mr. Wolf. Thank you, George. Conrad Martin. Joan. <laughs> I didn't even know you were in America. Did you come over with Elliot? Oh, no, you see, I met his family. Oh, difficult, huh? Well, I'm glad I met them before the marriage instead of afterwards. <laughs> Joan, I want you to meet the... Oh, we've already had the pleasure in the foyer. Well, here we are again. Oh, Kendall, I think you should know the man who owns the Malabar diamonds. Conrad Martin, Kendall Wolf. Oh, How are you? you? You two have so much in common. Conrad's a diamond fancier, and unless I'm greatly mistaken, Kendall fancies Conrad's diamonds. Well, doesn't everyone? Come, come, I saw them first. I'm not going to let you steal them out from under my nose. Since when have you come to expect honor among jewelers? <laughs> are you serious about selling the Malabars? As serious as Davenport is about buying them. And that's gone beyond the joking stage. We're ready for you now, Mr. Martin. Thank you. I'll see you later. It seems that I'm part of the floor show. Will you join us? Oh, thanks. We have our table. Now I do know everyone worth knowing. Ladies and gentlemen, you all know the circumstance that has drawn you together here this evening. The display of the Malabar Diamonds, which will be on exhibition throughout the whole week along with the special motion picture of their history. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce that much to be envied man, the owner of the Malabar Diamonds, Mr. Conrad Martin. Mr. Martin. Nineteen thirty-eight. The story starts in Paris, where I purchased the Malabar from Monsieur Stephanie for one million dollars, obtaining thereby the seven hundred and twenty-six perfect carats that you see before you. Meet Jan Garten, an outstanding lapidary, the only man who was willing to cut the Malabar. He polished one surface of the stone in order to see and study its grain. With his son, who will one day be the seventh generation of diamond cutters in the Garden family, he decided on the natural lines of cleavage and made diagrams of the several possibilities. There was no rushing this job. Daily changes were made as new discoveries in the grain narrowed the selection to specific lines. Six months were spent in these preliminary efforts, and then Garden was prepared to cut in any of several directions. He sketched out the various possibilities, the choice of which would be governed by taste as well as minimum loss. With the preliminaries ended, Garton's first step was to mark the line of cleavage with India ink. Then placed it in a cement base for ease of handling and to ensure seamless under pressure. The big day was on us. The final check was made against the line of cleavage. Every possibility of error had to be guarded against. A million dollar stake a pencil with a diamond instead of a lead point was used to make the surface incision. A diamond point is the only substance hard enough to scratch another diamond surface. And now the big moment was at hand. Even Garten felt his patient, as well as my money, was at stake. If the blow isn't pricely right, if it's too severe, or even too gentle, the stone Garden had misread the grain. What if the other experts were right? Here comes the answer. Success. A perfect cleavage. Red Garden's daring paid off my million dollar. Thank you. 
Someday I'm going to wear those diamonds. Still interested in emeralds? Shall we go? At a time like this. Getting something? No, I don't think so. But uh, we had a ten dollar bet on the current thing. It's been returned, hasn't it? Oh, yes. So it is. But aren't you forgetting something? It was Barker who found it. Thank you. Thank you, Sarge. you later. Will you take me home? You need a bracer. I asked you to take me home. It's Napoleon 1812. I'm not interested. The Emperor would personally have you beheaded for your lack of appreciation. I'm still not interested. Not even in emeralds? Not with blood on them. Well, it was Sam or the chauffeur of the car. Look, honey, you're all wrought up. And fed up. I've learned my lesson. From now on, I work alone. Oh, but you need help in, in this country. That's my problem. I know the profits are smaller, but so is the risk. Not to the victims. It's one thing to take their jewels, but it's something else to take their lives. If you won't take me home, a taxi will. Oh, now, Connie, let's talk this over after. What's going on here? That's the man, officer. He stole my emeralds. You sure? I'm positive. He threatened to kill us if we talked. Just when did these melodramatic events take place? As if you didn't know. How can you be so cold when you killed my chauffeur not 20 minutes ago? Oh, but that's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. I don't mind this wolf being arrested, but not on your charges. He's been holding me here against my will. What's that? Don't believe her, officer. She was in the car, too. That's right. We were here together. He may be a Lothario, but he's not a murderer. How long do you claim to have been here? Too long. Ever since dinner. And frankly, I wish he'd been molesting you instead of me. It's all right, kiddies. That's enough. Joke's over. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a minute. Well, you see, we had to know for certain whether you tipped off the police this afternoon. Finding out was a bit drastic. But effective. Now you'll find out what I think about you. Well, wouldn't you have done the same thing if conditions had been reversed? Maybe I would have at that. Anyway, you learned what I think about murder. Yes. You know, it was all I could do to keep her in my apartment until you got here. <laughs> Joan, I want you to meet some of your future collaborators. Doris Green, Joan Summers. 
I admire your acting, Miss Green. If I only had your temperament to go with it. <laughs> and this is Roger Elwood. Delighted. Not the jeweler. Uh, yes, my dear. How cozy. This is a surprise. I was just as surprised when I saw that greeting Conrad Martin gave you at Pierce tonight. And to get on with the introduction, this is Jerry, who doubles as butler for me. A pleasure, madame. And Pinky, who battles for Roger. At your service, madame. Come in. Did she pass? With flying colors. Joan, I want you to meet Sam and Bart. Glad to know you. Glad to see you alive. It's good to be alive. Had you fooled, huh? Jerry, how about drinks for everyone? Everyone? Well, don't you think you earned one? You're very kind, sir. <laughs> Not for me, thanks. I'm leaving. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Still burning? What I said earlier still goes. I've learned my lesson, and I don't want company. You think you can swing the Malabar diamonds yourself? I'm not that ambitious. We are, and we intend to get them. Not with me. You mean splitting close to a million? How many ways? Count noses. I could retire on that, if I were so inclined. Sorry, you're too promiscuous with guns. That's what I've always said. Now, oh, look, please understand. The real reason for tonight's episode was we had to know where you stood. Do you want to know something? Is there something I don't know? Policemen don't carry automatics. That dame's a phony. I'll do the talking, Sam. Still think she tipped off the police? Don't tell me you were the obliging soul. Well, maybe I was. I phoned Nick from her apartment. Sharp knew where she lived. Suppose he had a man down at the switchboard. That's my boner. The rest you can chalk up to bad luck. I don't believe in luck, good or bad. Those things can be foreseen or forestalled. Now check up on today's activities. I already have. Not very thoroughly. A woman you never saw before offered to help you with the Corinth diamond. Then you were almost apprehended outside the Ashton Hotel. Now you're suspect in the eyes of the police. They haven't a thing. And with the most important undertaking of our career in the offing, our names, address, and possibly our future plans are known by a woman we can't trust. That isn't a question of luck. Or police at a switchboard. That's Joan Summers, whatever her name happens to be. I still think you're wrong about her. We'll know soon enough. And if you are wrong about her? Well, whether I am or not. I won't allow anything to jeopardize our chances of getting Malabar diamonds. I agree with you on that. Mr. Wolf's apartment. Elwood. Yes, Bart? I follow the Summers dame into Pierre's. Yeah, she's talking to Martin right now. I see. You follow her night and day until further notice. She was so tired when she left here, she went straight to Pierre's. She's with Conrad Martin right this minute. Sam? Now, wait a minute, Roger. I'll take care of her. I'll admit I went overboard. I think this job's for someone without your imagination. All right. I'll take Sam with me, if it'll make you feel better. Sam, you have a date. The girl's way up. All right, Sam. Bring the car around front. Thanks. Came straight home, all right, by way of Philadelphia. Jealous? Sore. Know where I've been? One guess is all I need. Know who I've seen? Martin. Know what I did? What is this, a confession? Confession? You can't know my arm. You're lucky it's only your arm. Sit down. You're the most suspicious character. Start I... talking. You're taking all the joy out of life. Well? You think I've given you away, don't you? Naturally. Instead, I'm giving you a chance at the Malabar diamonds. I persuaded Conrad to let me model them tomorrow night. You were mighty fast, don't you? 
It was easy. Conrad has to realize on his investment, and he'll do anything he can to speed up the sale. Why are you giving us the play? Well, someone has to kidnap me, and it might as well be your men. I see. So you're taking a big risk. That's my worry. Mine, too. That's the way I like you. Jill. Will you quit? If you will. When? Now. I can't. Until after the Malabars. But neither can I. Let's go see Elwood. To make the plans? And square you with him. Do you think that'll take much selling? You never can tell about Elwood. He said he was opposed to violence. I know, that's what he said. Either he plays the way I play, or I don't play. Now, let's not cross any bridges. Come on. Miss Summers is all right. We don't have to worry about her. You better start worrying about yourself. Nick. Come out with your hands up. Listen, Nick. You listen. I take your risks, and I get the double cross. Well, nobody crosses me more than once. Who said I double crossed you? Never mind that. Two years I sit and stir. Sounds quick, don't it? Like something you could do maybe standing on one leg. Do you know what goes to make up a year? 365 days. And 365 nights. It gives a guy a lot of time to figure out who tips off the cops. Well, now I know. <laughs> What's gotten into you, Nick? Do I look like the kind of an idiot who'd let five grand slip through his fingers? What are you talking about? If I double-cross you, I double-cross myself. Then I take the rap again. But I lifted the stone. I'm in this thing as deep as you are. Ten gets you fifty, you fell for an old copper trick. Sharp put you on the grill when he hauled you in. Filled you full of lies, figuring you'd talk. You believed him and got sore. Did Sharp get anything out of you? Did he bring up my name? Yeah, and hers too. Did you talk? Listen, Nick. There's more to it than just that job. Now think hard. Did Sharp get anything out of you? How do I know you're not giving me the same kind of a pitch that Sharp did? What happened to the dough you got from Barker? The mouthpiece got half of it. You can have my share. Smart cop, that Sharp. You got something else on the fire? Something big. You're in the clear. Can I depend on that? Yeah. Okay, Nick, let's go. That gun barrel looked as big as a tunnel. <laughs> I know what you mean. You've looked into one? Once. Makes you think of a lot of things, doesn't it? Not me. I went numb. I thought of everything. Things that never even occurred anymore. Started when I saw you lowering that window. I thought if you got to Nick before he fires, I'd live. If I live, I... I've never used these words before. Seriously, I mean. You don't have to say that. But I want to. I'd rather you didn't. May I have a cigarette? Sure. I'm telling you, I don't know who conked me. What about Wolf? He was upstairs. I just phoned and told him that the summer's dame was on her way up. That's when I got there. Sam told me to blow, I wouldn't be needed. I told you to stick with it, didn't I? Yes, but I thought... That's the trouble. The wrong people try to do the thinking around here. Well, don't you ever sleep? 
It's almost morning. Sit down, honey. I thought you two would be at least in Canada by this time. I was headed a lot farther than that. On a one-way ticket. You all right, Sam? Who raised the lump on my skull? Nick did it with a piece of lead pipe. Nick? Yes, if it hadn't been for John, he was going to give me a dose of lead, too. Why'd you bring her here? Maybe I didn't make myself clear. She saved my life. What does that to do with us? Just this. She's going to model the Malabars at Pierre's. When? Tonight. So you're going to model the Malabars? John thought we could arrange some sort of kidnapping. Yes, we could. The cards were right? They're right. I'll be the best judge of that. And you were here earlier. You wanted no part of us. What made you change your mind? I wanted to know I had access to the Malabars before I committed myself. And now that you do have access to them? As Kendall said, someone has to kidnap me. Why not you? Yes. Why not me? Doc, give me the layout of Piers. Pinky? Where are they stationed, the police? Here, 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 and here. What are their habits? The usual. Stay put, eyes open. But all toward the front? Well, this one, he sort of moves around. Does he ever get out back? Makes the kitchen about once every hour. When do you take the floor, before or after the picture's run? Immediately afterwards. What time does the picture go on? The last night, 10.32. Probably be about the same tonight, allowing a minute or two either way. They'll have the house lights out, and a spotlight will be following me. Let's see. Here's how it operates. The control panel is here. Pinky will pull the light switch when Miss Summers reaches this table. Is that where I'll be? No, no. You're much too closely identified with Miss Summers. Bart and Jerry will be there to pick her up. Where will I be? With Doris and me at my house. But Joan needs an escort. No, I don't. You get me a table near Bart's. I'll make it look as though I am chasing the kidnappers. When I get to the car, if there are witnesses, pretend to slug me and drag me along. Okay. Okay. But don't slug me too hard. Now, here's the getaway plan. With the police all guarding the front, Bart and Jerry will take you through the kitchen this way. Meanwhile, Pinky will have left the control panel, gone to cover the kitchen in case their guard is around. Sam will have the car at the rear entrance, and away you go. When you're sure you're not being followed, come to my house. Any questions? Satisfied, John? Yes. She wanted to make sure there'd be no violence. There won't be, if everyone does his and her job. Any more questions? No, no I think it's simple enough to be brilliant. Well, we all need some rest. Everyone get to bed. We'll meet again at five and go over the plans once more. All right. Well, good night. Good night. Good night. Can we give you a lift? I'll see John home. Very well. See you at five, then. We can't go through with this. Let's back out. Let's get out of this whole miserable business right now. Scared? Yes. What it'll do to us. You can't back out after a job. You have to stop before one. That's why we have to quit now. No, John. I owe this one little job to Roger. You don't owe anything to Roger. Think of what you owe yourself. Kendall, I can back in ten minutes. Monday, we'll be on our way. Where? Anyway. No, Joan, there's no such place. 
Earlier you told me to get out. You said I didn't belong. I know, but that was earlier. It still holds. I don't belong. But neither do you any more than I do. That's what I'm trying to make you understand. Joan, I have a feeling you're holding something back. That you're not coming clean. What is it? Nothing, Kendall. Then why this sudden change? A woman can change her mind, Kendall. But never her heart. I'll do my part. work. Imagination, I've heard, is a step before temptation. You credit me with imagination? It follows. After all, you've been tempted. How are the English jails? Drafty, like English castles. That was your only rap? Mm -hmm. I've been with Jewelers Indemnity five years now. I know. Looks like your good behavior has become a habit, to judge by the number of arrests you've engineered. Set a thief to catch a thief. What about Kendall? What about Kendall? I've got eyes. You'll never square yourself with him. I'm giving you this chance to back out. You could have that last night. It's almost time. I'm ready. We'll see that he doesn't get hurt. Thank you, Sergeant. They say no matter what kind of a job you've got, there are times that you would trade places with a ditch digger. I suppose they're right. Ladies and gentlemen, as the high point of our exhibition, we present lovely Joan Summers wearing the Malabar Diamond.
that's the wolf and drove off. Take the first corner to your right. Take it easy, you lost them. Doris, here's your plane ticket. Flight 32. I'll wire as soon as I land. No. I'll contact you and it's safe. Hang on to those diamonds and stay put. Good work. Why didn't you tell me you changed the plans? Go down to that lobby and telephone if even a fire truck goes by. I right. Check on the other car. We move fast from now on. We left the cops back on 53rd Street. Never underestimate the opposition. Where were the police? In the foyer or the kitchen? Kitchen. Kitchen. The matter of us, quickly. Lady Doris. Call me soon. The sooner the better. Drive it to the airport. Now, would you mind telling me why you switched the plans? I always say, never leave anything to chance. I don't get it. Perhaps you'll get this. The police were guarding the kitchen because someone tipped off our plans. You went to Pierre's this afternoon, didn't you? For a rehearsal. I took that into consideration. It wouldn't have done any good repeating my suspicions to you, so I gave Derry the alternate plan to use if the situation called for it. Do you know why you lost the police so quickly? They went straight to my house. Because she told them we were to meet there. You can't get away with it. They know who you are. Every one of you. The evidence has gone. Now, have you anything to say? No. I have. I thought you might. Well, speak up. I don't like Welchers. Who's Welching? I am. I owe her one life. She saved you to get at me. I never thought of it that way. I'm not asking any favors, Kendall. You're not getting any. Dolly, fool! Throw your gun on the floor, Jerry. You're crazy! Over in the corner, Roger. You two, get over there. Come on, get out of here, hurry. We'll get you, Kendall. Sooner or later, one of us will get you. I'll take my... Handle, look out! All right, that'll be enough of that. Nice work. We got the rest of them downstairs, including Nick and Barker. And the diamonds. Come on. Get them out of here. I'm sorry I couldn't keep my promise. You hurt bad? No. Okay, let's go. John, I should have listened to you earlier when you warned me not to flirt. I should have let you tell me what you wanted to in the car. Can you wait a couple of years? All right, Kendall. Perhaps I should have been a ditch digger.